Hi and welcome to this lesson on introducing orders of reactions. In the previous lesson we learned about the rate equation and how it links to the rate of reaction and the concentration of our reactants and the rate constant and the order of reactions. So I introduced that word but we're going to look at it in more detail now. So the orders of reaction. It shows how the rate of the reaction depends on the concentration of each of the reactants. So to find the total order of a reaction, we need to add up the powers. And I introduced those to you in the last session. So K, or rate, of course, is equal to K, our rate constant, with the concentration to the power of M times the concentration of our other reactant to the power of N. And if we add M and N together, that gives us our overall order of reaction. Here we've got an example of a reaction. So the rate is equal to the rate constant times the concentration of A raised to the power of nothing. So when the power or the concentration of A is raised to zero, it means that the concentration of A has no effect on the rate of reaction. So we say that the order of reaction with respect to A is one, which means it's first order. That's how we talk about it, first order. The order of reaction with respect to reactant B is 2, because it's raised to the power of 2. So we could say that is second order. The overall order of reaction is going to be A plus B. So 1 plus 2, it's 3. So it means the overall order of the reaction is third order. You saw in the previous example that we have the concentration of A raised to effectively what we could see as nothing. This is the same as writing A to the power of one. So we say it's first order. When working out the overall order of a reaction, don't forget the one. The orders of a reaction can be determined experimentally. So what we can do is we can change the concentration of reactants, for example, of one of the reactants, and compare that to a control where nothing has changed. 